Hello, Princeton County teachers. In this video, we're going to discuss the settings of your Zoom account, the pros and cons of enabling and disabling some of those settings prior to meeting with your students. So to get started, we're going to go to zoom.pwcsbackpack.com. It's going to ask us to sign in. Once we're signed in, we're going to see right here we have our name and our job title, so you can edit that. You can also edit the school you work for. You can also add a profile picture. In this, you'll see your personal meeting ID, and you can edit or customize your personal meeting ID or personal meeting link. The personal meeting ID, I think, will be very beneficial for teachers as reoccurring office hours. Over here, you'll see you can schedule any meeting. So these are meetings that are going to happen necessarily outside of Canvas. We'll talk in another video about how to use Zoom inside of Canvas. Any personal meetings that you've been to, again, your personal meeting room, any templates that you have. You'll also be able to access any cloud recordings that you've done from your both your Canvas classes and from your personal Zoom class Zoom meetings. Also, any local recordings that you've done on your local computer. And here we are in the settings. So some of these settings you cannot turn on or off because they have been set by the district level. But let's go through them. So all, all of your meetings require a password. You can set up a, a customized password for your meetings as you schedule them. You can also set up a customized password for your personal meeting ID. So again, a customized password for students to enter in when they join your office hours. This password should be unique to you but also not too difficult with upper and lowercase letters for students not to be able to enter in correctly, I think especially of our younger students. You definitely want to enable the waiting room because we want to be able to just check. We don't want students just to pop right into the meeting without us verifying that we have let them in or, or maybe we're in a one-on-one -on -one meeting and we need students to wait in the waiting room. So I'd recommend leaving this for everyone. You can also customize your title, logo, and description. I think this will be very, very helpful as we tradition transition to the fall is you can set up your office hours. So mine says my virtual summer office hours are Monday through Friday from nine to 12. And it says if I'm not near my computer, I get an email. So any student that enters or any student or parent that enters your waiting room, you'll get an email that someone is waiting. So that's nice. And then I would recommend we turn on embed the password invite with one click join. I think that's really going to help our students, especially our K to eighth grade students, be able to click on one link and open up Zoom. We want authenticated users only to be able to join our meeting. That's how we stay a nice, secure classroom. We don't have people outside of our students joining. We can turn this off at an individual basis if we schedule a meeting with parents. This has already been done for you so that you don't have to add in their email address. Currently, pwcs.edu and pwcs-edu.org email addresses are the only ones authorized to join your meetings. You can choose to schedule that the video, for example, your video will always turn on. You can uh, choose to schedule that participants video will automatically turn on or automatically be off when they join. You can let students join by either the computer audio or call in. We don't want anybody to join before we get into the meeting. Again, you can enable your personal meeting ID for uh, setting up your office hours. It's automatically set up by the district that all participants are going to be muted before and when they enter a meeting. So we have to make sure we coach our students on how to unmute themselves if we want them to speak. You can choose to have emails or reminders about upcoming meetings. You can choose to turn on or turn off chat. So chat is turned on by default. Again, you can choose to turn this off if you don't want students to chat. You can choose to leave this on, and we'll show in a later meeting, how, a later video, how you can actually turn off the chat in the meeting so that you can focus student attention. Students are not able to have private chats. It automatically saves a TXT file of the chat after you end the meeting. This is helpful. You want to make sure you have sound notification turned on when someone joins or leaves, and really just for you or the co-host. This helps you if you're in the middle of teaching and then a student pops into the waiting room, you're able to know that there's somebody waiting. 
You can choose to allow students to send files in the chat. Again, you might want to turn this off or turn this on. It depends on your students. But then you can also, if you did have it on, only allow specific file types. You can choose to have a co-host for your meeting. This allows you and maybe a team teacher or maybe you and another teacher who's combining classes for your virtual instruction to also be able to moderate the chat and admit students from the waiting room. You can set up a poll in your meeting, so like an exit ticket that you might ask at the end of the meeting or to check for understanding in the middle. You can choose to turn on screen share. Screen share is a wonderful tool for you to be able to share your screen with the students, but then also you can choose to end the meeting, so you can set like I have, host only, and so students cannot share their screen unless I click to turn it on in the meeting and then they can share their screen. You'll always have access to stop a student from sharing their screen if they share something and you're ready to move on. You can choose to turn on or turn off annotation. So with annotation, it means that, for example, if I am sharing my screen, a student would be able to maybe annotate over top of my drawing. Again, this might want to be turned off, especially for some of our classrooms and our students, and then maybe turned on when we need it. You can also leave this on and then turn it off in the actual meeting. You can choose to share your whiteboard. So you can allow student, you can have a whiteboard where especially if you had a tablet, you would be drawing on the whiteboard and they could see that whiteboard. Again, this is a collaborative sharing environment. So you just wanna take into account your students and the relationship you have with them and maybe some classroom management strategies that are set up with the Zoom um, when you do share whiteboards. Remote control. You can choose to allow students to, you can choose to ask to request to control a student's laptop screen and then actually coach them through doing the exercise. This does not work if a student has an iPad or a tablet or using their phone. They will not be able, you'll not be able to remote control their device um, if it's a mobile device. You can choose to turn on nonverbal feedback. Nonverbal feedback is if they, you just want them to say yes or no, a thumbs up, thumbs down, or you want them to maybe a student can request a break or request that they need to step away for a second. And then this one, do you want to allow remove participants to rejoin? So again, that depends on your class and your environment. So with allowed remove participants to rejoin for your office hours, that's really, really helpful. For your classroom, if you had to remove a student for a behavioral concern, you might not want them to pop back in. But even if they did pop back in, they would be in the waiting room. So you could choose not to admit them until maybe all the other students left and you could have a private conversation with them. Students are not able to rename themselves, so that's nice. Students are able to hide their, their automatically they hide their profile pictures when they're in a meeting. So if their video is not showing, their profile picture does not pop up. You can choose to turn on breakout rooms. Breakout rooms is great, especially if you have uh, students where you have maybe a small class size of 15 or 20 kids at the Zoom meeting at one time, and you break them out into smaller groups, and then they collaborate virtually in the breakout room, and then you can join that breakout room to coach them in smaller groups. It's also really helpful if you have any co-hosts that are co-hosting meetings with you. Remote support is just like the remote control. Closed captioning is not something that you need to work about in this situation. Uh, language interpretation, if you wanted to assign other participants to interpret like in real time, like type in translation, especially if we're team teaching in some of our ESOL classrooms or a deaf and hard of hearing classrooms. Uh, students have the ability to turn on virtual backgrounds. So that's locked by the district level. Again, you can choose to have some of these other things, but these other ones don't necessarily matter. Allow users to select original sound in their client settings. That's helpful, especially if not all of our students have, maybe they're using like their Bluetooth headphones for their microphone, allowing them to use that as opposed to the Zoom microphone might help them. And then this one's really important because not all of our students have access to a laptop. Um, some of our students might not be able to download the application. So we want to make sure that show a join from browser link is enabled so that our students that don't have the application can launch it from uh, Google Chrome or Safari or another browser.
If you think you're going to have really, really large meetings, you can choose to allow live streaming meetings. And you can choose whether or not participants need to receive an email notification when a meeting has been canceled or when that you have created the meeting. And then there's some other things in here, but that's the basic gist of all of the settings inside of your Zoom account. Thanks for watching.